Hello everybody, welcome back down into the dungeon for the Thursday look around. We are in fact going to be putting that mead together a little bit later on. I've still got a couple things that I want to do first. But, thought I would share with you the results of today's ladybug hunt upstairs in the studio. There are, at last count, 16 to 17 in here. And I may have missed a few. But, I gotta say, I love the fact that while my house is infested with aphids, I have ladybugs crawling out of the woodwork. That's great, and very, very helpful. Looks like that mint could clearly use some watering. I guess I'll need to run around with the watering jug here in a little bit. But, that's not what we're doing today. Right now, it's about the great release, isn't it? One on the lid there. Look, they're making, they're making more ladybugs. So we'll just put this. Oh, where shall we put this? Let's put this over with the yellow scorpion for now. And they can go wherever they want to from there. It is great to have all of this natural assistance in the aphid wars, though. Oh, that one's already heading over to the mint. Cool. There's probably, you know, there's probably 50 to 60 of those things that I've brought down here so far. Just, I'd say in the last month or so. That's fantastic. Definitely need to water some things here. Not a happy looking tomato. Yeah, I'll get to that. Mead first. So most of this mead making adventure is probably going to take place upstairs in the kitchen, but that's nothing new to this channel now. And um, yeah, I am going to leave it to age down in the darkened kind of electrical room over there. Might put a box over it just to kind of keep it in the dark. I might not. We'll just, we'll see. It's mead. We've been making this stuff for thousands of years. In theory, this should be pretty simple. So I don't think I'll mess it up too bad, right? Right. All right, I gotta go mix my sanitizer and get things ready in the kitchen. So here we are, we're up in the kitchen now. I've got all my supplies together. I've got some honey, I've got my jug, measuring cup here. This actually goes to a full four cups, so I'll have a liter of honey properly. I was just gonna guesstimate, thanks Furnace. I was just gonna guesstimate and call a kilogram a liter, but it actually works out to be just over three cups. So we're gonna spray all this down with sanitizer and proceed from there. So while I'm getting the last of my things ready here, I'm just slowly bringing my water up to temperature to add the yeast. It says it needs to be like 100 to 110 degrees. It's 65. So we've got a little way to go there. I don't want to take it above that point though. I'm not sure if it's safe or not or whatever, but I don't want to take any chances today. All right, so I got to add my water here. I'm going to put some honey into this and then we're going to add our warmed activated yeast to it and uh, continue to fill it up from this pump later gotta like having the distilled water on hand as it were so I need four cups of honey because that's one liter out of our gallon jug here and like I said I'm pretty sure it's uh, one part honey to three parts water I guess I'll find out in a month or so this is gonna take a little while to finish off so we'll get back to you when that's done playing in the honey ah, I need another honey now for the fun bit with my less than steady hand I am about to attempt to pour the honey into the jug and not all over it. It's a long, slow, steady pour. All right. That is a lot of honey. Just keeps pouring and pouring. Getting on time to scrape, though. All right. Oh! And only then do I get it all over the side of the jug. 
And now the towel. Oh, I'm making a mess. Had to happen sooner or later. So Winnie the Pooh had an awful lot of honey. Was he secretly making mead to survive life in the Hundred Acre Wood? You know, it's, gotta wonder. Definitely gonna have to clean off the side of that jug. And I think that's about all the honey I'm gonna be able to scrape and squeeze out of this. So this is reading at 104, which is where the yeast says the water should be to start activating it, climbing to 105. I'm going to take it off the heat. And... Oh, for the record, EC1118. It's a champagne yeast. Because I saw somebody on YouTube do it, and then I saw other people on YouTube do it, and other people. Does that count as peer pressure at this point? Okay, so we've got the yeast in there. I don't know if I'm supposed to stir, stir it or not now that I stop and think about it. So I'm just going to let it sit and uh, absorb. We'll cut back in a couple of minutes when we add this to our big old one gallon carboy over there. Well, I guess one gallon's not that big, but to our one gallon carboy. So I've decided that these picture directions read pour it in, let it sit for 15 minutes stir the bugger out of it, and then add it to your concoction. I can only assume that little clock with a 15 is 15 minutes and not 15 seconds, because why bother? So, yeah, we're at about, I don't know, eight minutes? Because unfortunately I didn't check the time when I started this. And the yeast is starting to have a little fun, playing around in the water, floating, dropping, floating some more. So, I'll give it a few more minutes and uh, then we'll pour it into what we've got over in the jug. So it's been about 15 minutes, give or take. Let's pour this in. Alright, that's getting some funky color to it. Alright, so I sprayed my airlock with sanitizer solution. I filled it up to about there and then added some more water just to dilute that a little bit but in theory everything's safe I have this wonderfully murky jug with the beautiful golden honey at the bottom there I'm just gonna slap a label on this so I've got a date and a basic recipe and then she goes down to the dungeon where booze belongs alright so here we are down in the electrical room where it's gonna sit until it, in theory, should be ready May 5th, give or take. Got a towel, so I'm just going to wrap it up with that to block any light. And uh, we will check back on this, well, probably in the coming weeks. I doubt I'll let it ride until the 5th before I can come back in here with the camera. So cute, all bundled up like a little baby in there. Now, brew for daddy. Brew for daddy. And there you have it. In theory, I have started my first batch of mead, which is really cool and uh, kind of an unintended lifestyle goal. <laughs> so I will be really curious to see what comes of all that. And uh, I will definitely keep you guys informed. We'll probably check on check in on it, I don't know, weekly? Sounds good. And, uh, you know, hopefully that water will clear up, I guess. I don't know. I've never watched mead before. Um, maybe in the future I'll set up like a time lapse and we can do the whole month of watching the bottle and just see what happens in there as it goes. That could be kind of cool. I'd have to borrow Shox's camera for that though. And I don't think she'd want it used for a whole month. So we may need another plan. Yeah, we definitely need another plan. Alrighty everybody, I am going to uh, wrap it up there. I've got some more stuff i got to do upstairs and I've still got to edit this and it's getting late so I'll see you tomorrow have an absolutely fantastic night